Let's get real, shoulder pain sucks and today we're not gonna waste any of your time, we're gonna give you the top exercises to fix this problem short and long term. So to make a long story short guys, after many years of lifting and a lot of neglecting of rotator cuff work, this is something that happens because the supraspinatus tendon as well as the subacromial bursa are just essentially being rubbed together and nothing is working properly. So a lot of times this can cause inflammation, tears and strains and oftentimes you feel it deep within the shoulder, it runs down the biceps and that's why you're experiencing the pain but here's how to fix it. So before we show you the things that you're going to want to do to avoid all this pain, we're going to actually check to see how you know if you do have uh, uh, shoulder impingement. The first one is called painful arc as you can see on the screen here uh, and then the next test here is going to be called the Hawkins Kennedy test. You're going to bring your arms bent to 90 degrees of shoulder flexion in front of you as you guys can see on the screen. Crank your hand down with the help of your other hand and you know if this uh, really bothers you then you maybe have uh, shoulder impingement. And last but not least this is called Nears test. You're going to want to raise your arm right out in front of you, thumb pointing downwards and you may have shoulder impingement if this movement reproduces your symptoms. So as promised, we're going to show you short and long-term fixes. This is a short-term one. You're going to want to do five to six reps against the wall. Once you get to the level of your shoulders, as you raise the elbows up and they come off the wall, you're going to almost bring them together to try to further externally rotate the arm, as you guys can see on the screen here. By doing this, simply put, you're going to be temporarily activating the rotator cuff, allowing you to reposition the head of the humerus to where it should be, therefore clearing more room to allow you to raise your arm above your head without any kind of pinching. So this is good while you're working out if you're feeling any kind of pain. First up, really simple, really obvious, but a lot of people don't tend to do the most obvious things. If it hurts, stop doing it. If it's a very sharp pain, you want to avoid this. Um, usually uncomfortable pain, sometimes you can push through, but not always. Especially with this issue, this is more prevalent. Um, you got a ball and socket joint here. This is something that is really sensitive, and you don't want to worsen the issue. So if you're sleeping on your shoulder, um, on the bad shoulder, just stop doing that. It's as simple as it sounds. Doing these constant little things, you know, they're going to compound and become worse. So if you're bench pressing and it hurts when you're bench pressing heavy, it's better just to cut it off, spend some time doing the rehab, do the exercises we are about to show you and then kind of build it back up get to where you are comfortable to do these exercises Tip number two, we've got to simply reduce inflammation. So if there's excessive inflammation, everything's just going to really be disturbed, it's going to bother you and our goal here is to get that inflammation to go down, to subside, so that way we can move on to other movements to help you guys out. So there's a couple of ways to do this. You can go online, go to your local drugstore and buy some anti-inflammatory gel and apply that a couple times daily. On top of that, I'd highly recommend, and this is something I've been doing a lot lately, is just hot cold therapy for a couple times a day, 10 to 15 minutes. Next up, our goal here is to release the tight muscles. If your posture is not ideal, then your shoulder is going to be in a suboptimal position, which is going to actually lead to higher risk of shoulder impingement. So we're going to take a massage ball, foam roller, lacrosse ball, softball, whatever you have access to, apply firm pressure in a small circular motion, aim to do this for one minute or pretty much as long as you require. And uh, we have a bunch of uh, different groups that you're going to be trying to aim to really release and work on on the screen right here. Step number four, we're going to begin with initial exercises. The goal here is to keep the shoulder as mobile as possible. On the screen here, you see me doing the pendulum. You're going to lean over to allow your arm to dangle underneath you. Use the momentum of your arm and swing from side to side, forwards, backwards, circles, and you can do 10 repetitions each. Next up, we've got forward leans. This is fairly simple. Just place your hand on the back of a chair. Lean forward as you bring your arm in an upwards direction and do this as much as you can without uh, reproducing any pain, and you can repeat 20 times or just hold for 20 to 30 seconds. So next up we have rotations. You're gonna to wanna to bend your elbow to 90 degrees, keep your elbows in contact with the side of your body and proceed to rotate your arms outwards and inwards and allow the shoulder to move as much as you can once again without reproducing any pain and repeat 20 times. So number five, you're just going to go ahead and get a low resistance band. They're usually red. They can be a bunch of colors. Uh, they're pretty narrow here. It's maybe about an inch. And what you're going to do is just do this as an activation or warm up for any upper day or even take the time to do these exercises at home. So first off, I'm doing external rotations with the band. As you can see, I'm nice and postured. I'm squeezing my abs. I have that elbow nice and tight and I'm opening up my rotator cuff as much as I can as far as I'm comfortable to. If you have severe pain, you definitely want to tease it out and do it at your level. Um, furthermore, you want to do it with control throughout the movement. You don't want to be jerking and just throwing your arm around. This is 
foolish and this is how you're going to cause more damage. So do it with control. Make sure you have everything tight and you're really just working on opening it up and improving as you go on. Now you can do this also internally. As you can see, I'm doing internal rotation here, working at the opposite effect. Um, furthermore to that, some other great movements as you can see, which I'll demonstrate now on screen. Our shoulder dislocation, so you're going to start with them in front of you. You're going to come up overhead, try to spread it, come all the way back to your back. Once again, come up and spread. Uh, this is a little more advanced, and if you have serious shoulder injuries, I would avoid this. Um, so definitely make sure you're being okay, and definitely make sure your doctor says you're okay to do these movements before you jump into them. So you're gonna come overhead, stretch it out right back, come down, and this is really gonna wake and open up that shoulder. Another thing you can do is kind of warm up the rear delts, chest, and just pull in, and just do some of these quick movements, get everything activated, warm, and just get that joint moving, and just work on its kind of ability to withstand this and grow and you'll get some muscular endurance and some muscular strength out of it. So these are going to make a yard of difference. Definitely implement these. So on top of the exercises Josh just showed you, we're also going to do a couple more. This is going to be focused on isometric training here. This is called the external rotation and this is to make sure you don't aggravate the inflammation in your shoulder. It involves strengthening your shoulder muscles without moving. Keep your elbows tucked into the side of your body. Pull the resistance band away from your body and you're going to hold this position for 30 seconds. Do it three times. Next up we're focusing on anti-impingement training. Training. Guys, if the shoulder bone is not centered in the shoulder joint, it can often move in an upwards position, and this can lead to the impingement of the structures in the subacromial space. So that's why we want to really focus on humeral head depression here. As you guys can see on the screen, basically you're going to just set up a resistance band uh, high up. You can do it in a doorway, whatever works best for you. Hold at the bottom for three to five seconds, keep constant tension, and do this 10 to 30 times for three sets. Okay, so next up we're going to move right into the adduction and similar, it's just going to be placed up ahead, or sorry, above head. Um, hold it for, for three to five seconds down at the bottom and you're just going to do this once again 10 to 30 times and these are fantastic to be doing on top of those exercises that Josh was saying. Next up we're moving into exercises where we're working against gravity, so we're starting off with the flexion. You're going to want to stand on the resistance band this time, aim to pull the resistance band upwards to shoulder height. Hold for three to five seconds, return slowly down, repeat 10 to 30 times, and uh, perform three sets of these. Okay, so and last but not least, we're moving right over into abduction. Similar, once again, you're standing on the resistance bands, you're pulling it to the side, holding for three to five seconds, and you're always, for every one of these exercises, keeping constant tension throughout, and uh, once again, 10 to, 10, 10 to 30 times, sorry, perform three sets of these, and you guys will be well on your way to strengthening that rotator cuff. Hopefully this helps, hopefully we can help alleviate some of that pain. At the end of the day, if it's severe, we definitely recommend seeing a doctor or a physio or something like that. But these are some home remedies that Kyle has personally used. As you can tell, he's very passionate about this to help alleviate that pain, stay in the game, stay long term. This is something I try to do actively because even though I don't have the pain, I like to try to do these movements to keep everything fresh. Shoulder and the knee are two very sensitive issues in weightlifting and if they blow out, you're going to be really in the rabbit hole for some serious damage. So definitely think with foresight, be intelligent, do these with control. And uh, this is another great video. Hope you enjoyed it. Share it with a friend that could use it. Like, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff. Peace.